What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 172 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today it's a big game. It's a big two games. It's a double header. It's Benfica. It's the Champions League. If you missed last episode, go watch it. If you watch that episode, well you might know just how significant these games are for us. These are absolutely massive. Anyway, let's have a look at them. Um, since the last episode, we have played a few games, actually, just to start this off. We beat Cannons and College Europa 8-0 and 7-0. Pretty good stuff. Dude's got four in the second game against College Europa. Really good performance by him. We also had a international break with a few games, uh, one of which was a World Cup qualifier. I decided not to live com it. I felt like after the shorter episode last episode, I didn't want to do another one-match live com. It was against Albania. Uh, we actually won 4-0, which was a really great result. As you can see, a variety of players getting on the score sheet. And we also beat Saudi Arabia 5-1 in a friendly. If we just look at the World Cup qualifying group as well, things kind of transpiring in an interesting way for us. If we just kind of get it so we can only see group six here, uh, you can see that we are still second. Uh, Ed, uh, Italy really struggling again. They drew against Albania 1-1 for a second time in this competition. Twice they've been held firm by Albania, and it does mean uh, that Italy, if we just look at them here, in their last two games, they've got Estonia, who are bottom of the group, and ourselves. Meanwhile, Sweden, who top the group, only have one game left. What does this mean? Well, Sweden's one game is against us. Italy's kind of one of their two games is against us. Next episode, or I don't know if it will be next episode, but whenever we play the next international games, which is in, I think it will be next episode, thinking about it. I think it's on the 11th of November. It's 12th and 13th, That's uh, or 12th and 15th. When, when's the next Champions League games? They're on the 3rd and the 25th. Okay, so actually it will be next episode. Uh, we're going to have a massive set of games because it could see us have a chance at World Cup qualification, just the way things have worked out. It's going to be tricky, however, because we are going to need to win both of those remaining two games against Sweden and Italy to stand any kind of a chance. And, um, yeah, it's it, as I said, not going to be easy, but we're going to see what we can do. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys will stick around for that episode. That's going to be an exciting one, really. Anyway, here and now, focusing on the Champions League. The Champions League where, of course, last time out we lost. And it wasn't a great defeat, was it, by any means? You can see with that result, Stuttgart go ahead of us on head-to-head. -to -head. Today's two games against Benfica are particularly big because Benfica beat Stuttgart 2-1. They also beat Club Bruges 4-0, which is the result that I believe we beat them by. Indeed, it was. So this should be a pretty tight affair, of course. Worth noting, Benfica, a team we have very, very frequently met. And I'm hoping that today uh, we can, of course, get the double over them. That has got to be the real aim here. Um, worth noting, I didn't really talk about it, but Manchester United, who knocked us out of the Champions League last year, um, they won the whole thing. They knocked us out in the quarterfinals. They went on to win everything. It does mean in the last three years, we've been knocked out of the uh, Champions League knockout stages by the eventual winners, which feels a little bit cruel in some ways. Either way, Benfica predicted to play a narrow 4-3-3, and with that... I'm tempted to play a narrow 4-3 or 4-3-1-2. How we're going to approach it, I'm not entirely sure. I think we've got to play Girard at centre attacking mid. It's interesting to note that Glenn Andre frequently now being tipped by my assistant to start in Europe. My assistant really likes him as an attacking midfielder, and to be honest, I do too. He's a really good attacking midfielder on support, and to be honest, it's a role that he could very easily slot in and play. With the exception of his perhaps defensive capabilities with his positioning and his long shots, he's an exceptional player to play there. That said, I feel like I've got to stay loyal to Mosca and Duz and Girard, so they are the players that will play there. Dominic Eller actually been putting in the box-to-box -box midfielder role, another interesting kind of, uh, I guess, player there to be put in that kind of position. Whether or not I want to play him there, I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest. Uh, I think I've got to play Mini Mosca, to be honest, at defensive midfielder. It's a case of how do I want to line up the rest of the team. I think I'm going to go with Gilvan, Mosca and uh, Volsky. It's worth noting that Gilvan not been given many chances this year. Um, he's not played yet in the Champions League for us. He's a man who's going to come into the squad today and hopefully have an impact. You can see uh, a great little player. As a box-to-box -box midfielder, to be honest, he's very, very good. His bravery really the only thing that lets him down. So we're going to play him there. Mini Mosca going to hold the fort in the defensive midfielder position. A player who's been at the club a while. He's kind of slowly been developing away, and I really rate him. 24 years old, regularly playing for the Spanish international side. And, um, yeah, he's going to play again here today for us. On the bench, we are going to have some options. Um, in terms of how many options, I'm not entirely sure. Let's make sure we get kind of a fairly balanced team here. So... 
We have one at centre back. That's another interesting player actually to pick to play. Juan, uh, one of our younger players, really developing though well, the 19 year old. I don't think I am going to play him on the bench. I think we're going to go with Gary Horst. We'll have Graffito who can play either full back position. Thiago will be our defensive midfielder. We have Junior and Magni who can play on either wing. Uh, in terms of the centre of midfield, I think I'm going to not play Ella and I'm going to play Andres Mora as an option there. And uh, uh, I think we might keep Glenn Andre as our lone striker option, to be honest. I kind of, I like this guy. I think he could be an absolutely fantastic striker and we're going to give him a chance here. Anyway, taking on Benfica, the team, as you can see, Young, Cabasele, Mustafa, Assad, Giganov. That midfield trio who we've already gone over of Gilvan, Mini, Mosca and Volsky. Up top, Mosca taking the captain's armband. Only got 12 leadership, but such a loyal player for us. Been at the club a, a fair, well, I was about to say a long while now. It's been a fairly long time, it's fair to say. He's currently in his eighth consecutive season. Let's see if he can do the damage for us today. We need to bounce back. This season, I mean, we've done two live comms. We've lost them both. That hasn't happened in a very, very long time. In fact, it might go back to the first season, that kind of record, to be honest, when we're in the Segunda Division. And even then, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. It's uh, it's something that we want to set the record straight and kind of fix here. Of course, Benfica at home for us in this first game. We are, of course, going to then play them away. Not going to be easy. Let's see what we can do, though. That's the real challenge. Uh, Regis, who's their centre-back, number four. A player who I've looked at a fair bit as a player who I might be tempted to sign as an alternative to Mustafa. Uh, but we're on the attack here. Mosca hits the woodwork. Almost the perfect start. We've really struggled. We've not scored yet. Um, I was about to say we've not scored yet in a live con. We haven't. We lost 1-0, of course, to Gibraltar Lions. And then we lost 2-0 to Stuttgart. So to hit the woodwork, uh, promising early signs, I guess, really... I'd like to see a score rather than hit the woodwork after four minutes. And uh, now, actually, Benfica bringing the ball forward. Joaquim here. Got a player over on the overlap. That's a Rojo. But Mini Mosca, the Spaniard, he does the mopping up. Stuttgart getting a, a lead there, which is worth noting. Girard through. Can he finish that? Oh, my gosh. Two clear-cut chances. Five minutes gone. My hands are already being waved around in the air. It's not a good sign. Cabasele to do's. Girard, Mosca's on ahead, Cabasele, can he whip it in? He can't get it, but Volsky's at the edge of the box. He's tackled and now Nazim to bring the ball forward. Mustafa deals with it nicely, though. And uh, kind of interesting to note how this Benfica 4-3-3 is going to match up against ours. Of course, ours is a little bit more dynamic. We have Girard at centre attacking mid, but two very similar shapes, and it's going to be tricky for both teams, you'd think. As uh, Mini Mosca collects the ball nicely, Cabasele, options in the middle. I think that's an own goal. And, oh, okay, it's not an own goal. It's Mosca with the goal. Second goal of the season. I'll, I hold my hands up. I take it back. It's a really nice finish, actually, there by Mosca. I thought it came off the defender. You see a fair few of them where the defender kind of charges at the near post, desperate to get the ball away from the attacker, and he can't help but divert it into his own goal. Capacelle, on that weaker left foot of his, puts it in. I mean, it looks like the defender slid at it, and then maybe Mosca got a toe on it to help it on its way. Either way, the keeper was close. Mosca definitely had to make the contact there. And, uh, well, he did. 1-0. It's a good start. We'll take it. We've been way on top of this game. We're on the attack again here. Girard, Mosca, please bury that. He does. He's got a brace already. I mean, we should be 4-0 up, but we'll take it. Fantastic start to this game. 20 minutes gone. It's 2-0. And while goal difference may play a factor in the group stage, although it is unlikely, at the same time, you want to see your team score as many goals as possible. And, well, Mosca... He takes the second and third chance of this game that have come his way. Of course, he squandered one early on, as did Girard. But, um, well, we're exerting some dominance early on in this game. Benfica yet to have a shot on target. And, well, we have the ball again. Can we make it free after 30 minutes? Dues. Girard shoots. Saved. He gets the rebound, though. Where was this team when we played Stuttgart? Where were you? Because this is something different. This is... This is the kind of performance against the strongest team in the group, or the second strongest team in the group behind ourselves, who, you know, we should be struggling in this game if we've lost to Stuttgart, but we're 3-0 up. We've really, we, we've hit them well. Uh, I feel like the fullbacks are doing a good job, actually, of pushing on forward with kind of the narrow system that Benfica are using. But regardless, this is a good attacking display so far, and it might be four before half-time. Gaiganov tries to get the throw in and can't get it too deep, but he does get a second chance. Dues! Wins the ball in the air. It wasn't really contested. It's an insane finish. I'm not sure how he's got this in. I'm not sure if it's a header or a volley. Either way, it's 4-0. It's not even half-time. What is this madness? Gaikanov crosses it in. Deuce, that is an incredible header. Picks that out near post. He raises his hands aloft. He should be... Do, he, do the Superman, my friend. You deserve it. That was an insane header. 4-0. 
I was nervous going into this. Last episode, not a memorable episode. You know, I fought a thousand games at the club. We'll do a special. Nine minutes, 2-0 defeat. Nothing, nothing particularly spectacular about that game. Coming into today's games against Benfica, I knew that we needed big performances. And well, if we can give half the performance of this in the second leg or in the second match against them, we're going to be in very, very good stead here. This has been an absolutely scintillating performance. Benfica have had a few half chances, but they've really struggled to... Well, they haven't taken any. I was about to say they've really struggled to take them and took them away. They haven't took any of them away. Um, we've looked fairly good from what we've seen of this game. Capacelle and Mustafa struggling a little bit with fitness, but Capacelle on such a good game. I can't really afford to take him off. Speaking of the devil, he's on the ball again here. Can he find a ball into the box? Cleared away by Vila. Girard going to try and win that leg race. Arroyo, though, wins it. Can he get it forward? He lays it inside to Edo. He passes it forward. Benfica with a chance here. They take it. The clean sheet's gone. I mean, it's 4-1. I shouldn't be getting worried yet, but part of me kind of thinks back to the games we've had so far this season and thinks, we can't bottle this, can we? I mean, Young maybe should do better. He makes himself fairly big. It's a nice run. I think, really, we were just caught with a few too many men up the field and it ultimately caught with our pants down around our legs. 15 minutes left, though. Let's make some changes here. Let's get, you know, get on Glenn Andre. Uh, and I'm going to take off... Uh, I'm going to take off Girard. In fact, am I going to take off Girard? I'm going to take off Deuce, just because he's got ever so slightly less condition. I'm also going to bring in... Um, Graffite for Cabasello, who's really struggling. I'm also going to take off Ramadan Mustafa for Gary Horse. We're going to go for a triple change. I wouldn't normally rotate out our defenders, but I feel like this game should be should be over. He says as well. Benfica look like they might be on the attack. We'll see how we get on though. Uh, worth noting, Girard number 31. In fact, not Girard. Sorry, Glenn Andre Graffite, the sub. He almost added himself to the score sheet. I mean, if you were going to put money on a player to get a goal for us, you would have probably put it on Glenn Andre as a sub coming on. Rather than Graffiti. Graffiti with a chance though. Orojo. Interesting effort. Young collects it with ease. Ten minutes left. I I'm just nodding along. Pretty happy with how things have panned out so far. There might be time for some more. There's still ten minutes left. Girard forward. Not a lot of men around him. If he'd got that away, that would have been a fantastic finish. It was a good save ultimately actually. Uh, by the Benfica keeper. He's done a fairly good job this game for them really. As we are on the attack again here, Graffite intercepted by Regis. Horst caught a little bit out of position here. Can he get back and cover? Benfica with plenty of men in the middle. Ludwig Young with a nice initial save. Souza with the rebound though. It's 4 2. Do I panic yet? I mean, there's eight minutes left. It, sh it should be over. Initial header tipped away nicely by Young, but unfortunately couldn't get up for the, for the seconds and no one defensively covering for us. If it gets to 4-3, I go contain. My worry is that at that point, it's probably too late. Joachim, I tell you what, Lung, Lung, Young's held on to it. I, I'm going contain. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. What a ridiculous situation to be in. I mean, we'll probably concede now. i switch switched to contain. Moscow bringing the ball forward. Drifting out wide. Glenn Andre, really the only man in the middle to aim for. Can he pick him out? Lays off to Gaiganov, who does well to retain possession. Gilvan. To Mini Mosca in that deeper role. Picks out Gaiganov. Nice ball. Ball whipped in maybe Mosca near post. Looking for that hat trick, of course. Correa clears it, but only as far as Mini Mosca. Nice prolonged, pro uh, um, prolonged pressure. That's a, a mouthful there. Unfortunately, uh, no end product for us. And well, there's a minute and 40 seconds left. That should be game over. I can't see them getting too. And actually, we're on the attack here. Mosca for the hat trick. He had a chance. We've had three, uh, sorry, five clear-cut chances in this game and five half chances. To be fair, Benfica have had their fair share of chances in this second half. They've come out much a different team. And actually, that's something worth perhaps monitoring uh, going into the second game against them. That they, they kind of figured us out maybe a little bit with this narrower system. Um, but regardless, we are going to get the win. We are going to get the three points. I feel fairly confident to say at this point. Mosca is still desperately looking for that hat-trick of his. Um, the finishing in this kind of latter stages of this game has been a little bit concerning. You know, it would have been nice to take a few more of the chances that came our way and build upon kind of the four goals that we scored in the first half. But regardless, the game was kind of over early on in the second half. I can't really blame the players for taking their kind of foot off the, the pedal too much. Ultimately, a very good performance. Uh, Girard getting the man of the match performance, but a fantastic team performance, really. Girard, Mosca and uh, Duz just had a great game between them all. And actually, that result sees ourselves, Stuttgart and Benfica all tied at the top of our group on six points after three games. A really interesting scenario emerging there. Uh, in terms of our game against Benfica, 
If we just check real quick, you can see it's in a few weeks' time. We've got two games in between that. You guys don't really want to see them. We want to get straight into the second game. It's going to be away from home. A very different challenge, perhaps, at hand. Hopefully, we can make something of it. And, uh, yeah, stick around, guys. We will be back for that game. And hopefully, well, we can come out on top. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second game of today's episode. We're taking on Benfica again. And, um, well, since the last game, there's been a little bit of news. Just have a quick look at it. Uh, we played two Primera Division games. We won them 4-0 and 6-0, two really convincing results, really. And uh, in the Primera Division, things looking pretty interesting to start the season. Uh, Gibraltar Lions, as you can see, second in the group. They drew against Lincoln Redimps, and they also lost against Glasses United, who themselves are third in the league uh, and currently unbeaten. Of course, they are led by the one, the only Aaron McVitie, uh, our former winger. Kind of nice to see him, of course, managing in Gibraltar. And uh, his glasses side, off to a good start this year. Elsewhere, Manchester 62 uh, have only won one of their opening four games. They drew four games, or three games, sorry, against Cannons, Lynx, and uh, Lincoln Redimps. Elsewhere, College Europa right at the bottom of the table. They did beat Lincoln Redimps, but they have lost against ourselves, uh, Gibraltar Lions and Gibraltar Phoenix. Um, but no, early on, obviously, not many teams playing that many even games. But it's a little bit scrambled. You know, for the longest period of time, it's really been ourselves, Gibraltar Lions, and then College Europa, and then really Manchester 62 and Lincoln Redimps. But as things stand, the league is very, very competitive. Lots of teams drawing. Um, lots of teams with kind of tightly fought games and it could be an interesting season and it may well be worth keeping an eye on kind of how that all develops of course as the season goes on there's a lot of games yet to be played anyway we are taking on Benfica today of course we did just beat them 4-2 however in the second half we conceded two goals and I feel like Benfica maybe figured us out a little bit so actually going into today's game we're going to try something different and we're going to play this it's the asymmetric 4-3-3 it's a formation which I used with Derby County on a save that I streamed for a little while it's a tactic which I feel like is going to help us defensively in terms of kind of hopefully coping with Benfica's front three, assuming they're going to play three strikers again. But going forward, there should be quite a lot of space to exploit. In terms of team news, just a little injury to tell you guys about. Guy Ganov out for two weeks. Uh, that means that Graffite is going to come in and play left-back for us, and then Cabaselli moves on to the right-back position, where, of course, he is right-footed. So that is a, a role that kind of suits him. Uh, another, another little bit of news, Dominic Ella, torn hamstring, out for two to three months. Really kind of painful injury, I guess, to see, because this guy's been developed been really really well for us and uh well he's gonna be out for at least the next few months either way this is the team this is the squad i'm pretty happy with it at the moment Dues and Girard are going to start up top but we've got options on the bench in the forms of mosca veronese there we've got gonzalez magni i should maybe put on another center mid looking at it and i, I think we will do that in the form of carlos andres mora who i'm actually going to put on for glenn andre and then I think I might also bring in Noel Rico, and uh, we'll take off Paul Smith, because uh, we've already got Magni who can play out on the left, Rico can play right back, uh, and yeah, we have a few options there. Anyway, let's submit our team. Of course, this is the fourth group stage game of the Champions League. Hopefully, we can get a good result. It's all very tight at the top of the table ourselves, Stuttgart and, and Benfica. All tied on uh, six points, as you can see here. It's very much anyone's game. I would also like to preemptively apologise if there's a little bit of background noise today. I've got the window open in my room where I record. Because in England, we have a heat wave. Now, I'm, I'm not someone who deals with heat anyway, but it's absolutely ridiculous. And I know that there's going to be people who live in kind of Mediterranean countries or just elsewhere where it's hot telling me it's not hot in England and I need to man up. I'm not designed for this. I think it's 30 degrees at the moment. It's mental. That's in that's in Celsius. That's like, uh, I think, 90-something Fahrenheit, 80-something Fahrenheit. It's hot. What isn't hot is how we've started this game. Assad giving away a penalty. Uh, the cross came in. Assad didn't really deal with it, I think is the fairest way to describe what he did there. And, uh, well, unfortunately for us... Well, <laughs> I was about to say, unfortunately for us, we're going to be a goal down. I need to shut up. Ludwig Young has just saved our bacon. The Swede with an exceptional save. That is absolutely massive by him. That said, Benfica retaining the ball might be a bit of pressure. Deuce collects it. Now can we hit them? Can we punish Benfica for that penalty miss? Junior holding up the ball well. Cabaselli on the overlap. Playing on that right-hand side, of course, where he is right-footed. That said, Benfica throwing men forward here. And I'm worried, actually, our fullbacks might be a little bit too adventurous at the moment. We might have to change their roles. Although, Graffite, of course, not a starter for us, but he makes a fantastic tackle there. Dues is threaded through. Takes it around his man. Can he finish it? What a goal that is. Take an absolute bow. That is an incredible goal. Girard with the assist. 
uh, Graffite did well to win it, and Dews, he took it round one man, he kind of dribbled inside, didn't have a lot of room, there were men swarming him. I mean, this touch here, fantastic, beats his man, and he, he tucks it away, there's players all over him, the keeper perhaps blindsided by his own defender there. But either way, having, um, well, conceded a penalty in the very first minute, three minutes into the game, we actually get ahead in this game, and well, that is not something I perhaps thought I was going to be saying at one point. But it's a good start. Uh, of course, a draw here would be an okay result, really. I want to play for the win, especially after the game against Benfica last time out. We showed that in the first half, we can absolutely outclass this Benfica team when we want to. Hopefully, the players can turn up big for us today. And uh, yeah, it might be a little bit tricky, but we should have the capabilities to come out on top as the ball comes in. Is that Cabasele with the own goal? It is. I mean, he's not playing his normal left-back position, but he can play left, uh, right-back kind of very, very well. Nazim with the ball in, Cabasele, I mean, what, I, I don't know, lost for words, <laughs> he's not dealt with the ball how you'd hope a right back would def kind of deal with the ball there, we have a chance there, Mustafa nods on to Jorge Assad, he scores his third goal of the season, the two centre-backs linking up there, of course, Mustafa has like 20 jumping and 18 heading and 20 strength, he just leaps like an absolute gazelle, wins the ball, and Assad, well, he hits it on the volley. A technically gifted centre-back, apparently. Very nice finish. Just caresses it into the bottom corner. A fantastic finish by him. This game's all action. I thought after the first game where we had six goals against Benfica, we might not be able to live up to that. We've had three goals already. And we're only 26 minutes in. And actually, Benfica on the attack here. Emre, the right-back. Inside to Kante. Now back out with Emre. No one closing him down. The ball crossed in. Dealt with well, though. But Hiao Pedro runs in. He probably should have done a little bit better there. It was kind of the selfish, stereotypical FM chance that you sometimes see in FM 16 where the player runs wide and he really should just pull it back and instead he goes for the shot. They've got another chance here. Young collects it. That was a clear-cut chance. I think that went down as a clear-cut chance. It was an opportunity. Nice defending, though. The block came in. And, uh, well, at the moment, at least, we are holding on to our uh, one-goal lead. Although Nazim back post, Young cannot keep that out twice. The initial save was a really good save, actually, by Ludwig Young. Unfortunately for us, however, uh, Nazim followed it up. Arroyo out on the left-hand side. Deep ball in. Nazim heads this. This is an incredible save by Ludwig Young. Tips it onto the post. But Nazim ruthlessly comes in, smashes it on the volley. It's 2-2. It's all square again. <laughs> Neither team really holding back in this episode so far. We might have a chance to do as he scores. It's not offside, I don't think. It's a beautiful goal. Junior with an absolute ball of quality, and it was a peach of a ball in. I mean, Glenn Gilbert would have been proud of that cross. Dews just runs off his man. Scissor kicks it. Oh, it's Di Canio-esque. Di Canio is looking down from the heavens. I don't know if Di Canio is going to be dead by 2036. I hope not. I quite like Paolo Di Canio. He's a fascist, which isn't that great, but I respect him as a footballer. But he would have been, if he was dead in 2038, this has taken a morbid turn. He'd be looking down on the stadium with pride at that goal. That was something special. That was something special. I think the heat's getting to me. Because what I've just said there is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life. Either way, we need to stay switched on here. Benfica going forward. Joaquin scores. It's 3-3. Free free. What, what is defending? What is def Does anyone defending? Do anyone heard of it? No. No one's heard of it. I mean, our team haven't. Benfica haven't either. There's been 12 goals in two games, and while we still have a pretty much an entire half of football, perhaps a little bit fortunate there. The deflected effort just fell into the path of Joaquin perfectly, but he buried it. And, um, well, 15 minutes gone. We have a set-piece junior, which is Mustafa is fouled. We have a penalty. I mean, Benfica had a penalty. They missed it. Sebastian Girard, I have faith in you. You can step up and score. It's every day of the week. Oh, my God, he didn't. He missed it. We've had two missed penalties, six goals. Seb, what happened? I, I had so much confidence and faith in him, and he does that to me. What was that? What was that? I mean, it's just a little bit mad, isn't it? This, these two games against Benfica. I can't believe we've had two penalty misses. Both at the same end. Both saves, to be fair. Um, it wasn't like the players blasted them over or wide. Uh, either way, 17 minutes gone. I'm kind of happy with how we're playing. Um, but we will make a few changes, I think, just with the team. Uh, Girard's had a really poor game, obviously. He missed that penalty. I'm going to move Deuce to complete forward and play Mosca as an advance forward. Uh, defensively, Graffite not had the greatest game at left-back. So I'm going to bring Gonzalez there. Uh, and I think we'll hold on to our last sub for now. Um, both of our centre-backs looking a little bit tired, which is a tiny bit concerning. 
in the latter stages of this game. But um, I don't really want to take them off. We might have a chance here. Julia switches it. Mosca on off the bench. Shoots and it's saved away very well by the keeper. But a good opportunity. Mosca. Perhaps that chance came to him a little bit too soon. Hadn't quite been on the pitch long enough to you know, get his shooting boots on. Have a touch of the ball. Get warmed up. 85th minute. Set piece whipped him. Mustafa wins the header. Take a bow. One assist and one goal to his name. The towering Egyptian scores the seventh goal of this game. Junior with another assist from another set piece. And, I mean, Junior whips in. It's a floated ball. Mustafa. I mean, he's challenged by four, five Benfica players around him. There's no apex player in sight. And he deals with it. Right. Four minutes left. I think at this point, this is the point where we go, maybe we should play defensive now. Um, we're going to just kind of drop everyone deep. We're going to just defend this as best we can, really. There's no not much point in doing anything too crazy here. Uh, Mini Mosca can play as a deep line playmaker on defend instead of support. The fullback's going to play defensively. We'll tell Gilvan to push on if he wants to. But um, no, this is now a case of let's just... You know, sit a little bit deeper, stay compact. Uh, we don't need to close down. We can relax a little bit. Uh, we'll play on defensive, and uh, we'll look to waste a bit of time as well. I think. Right, let's go with that. We're just going to try and see out this game now. Four minutes left to try and not concede. Our players are tiring. Fortunately for us, we've done a great job. I think of defending. I mean, a late chance for Benfica now. It was a pop shot and another long shot. It's blocked away nicely. We get a win. What a game that was. Um, well, Junior with the Man of the Match award. Two assists to his name. Dues with two goals. Had a great performance too. Both our centre-backs involved. And uh, well, that was an absolutely mental live con. This episode's been um, a good one. I think it makes up for the last episode against Stuttgart. I think that's fair to say at this point. Um, but no, finishes 4-3, uh, we duly delivered, no one's going to be happier than our fans, uh, worth noting Stuttgart won their game, that was a 4-0 win against Club Bruges, I believe ourselves, Benfica and Stuttgart have all beaten Club Bruges 4-0 now, so um, they are kind of the whipping boys here, fans are obviously jubilant after that result, Junior, man of the match performance by him, a player who I have seen in the YouTube comments sometimes gets a little bit of flack, it's worth noting he is the starting right winger for the Brazilian national team. And whilst perhaps he's not your kind of traditional out-and-out -out winger, he's just such a, a well-rounded, kind of gifted player in a lot of different areas. And he's just a great player to have, obviously. Great work rate, great technique. His crossing corners are good too. Um, and, uh, well, we, we had a few deliveries of quality from him today, and that's what's really counted for us. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I think this made up for last episode against Stuttgart. So if you watched that episode and you were underwhelmed, as I was actually playing it, which says a lot, uh, I hope this made it up to you. Uh, as always, as I said, if, you, if you've enjoyed, leave a like. If you've got any comments about the save, about the team, about these two matches, let me know. Have you had any games similar to these ones? I think that second game against Benfica with two missed penalties, an own goal, and, well, just general madness is certainly one to remember. But no, that's all from me, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, and other than that, it is me, Jack. I will see you next time, which I believe will be for a Rise of a Nation episode. Hopefully I'll see you guys then. And uh, other than that, I'm out. And I will talk to you guys in a bit.